Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent discovery of a very unusual pulsating star we've never seen before. A star that seems to pulsate in a way we've never seen before in any other star. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So obviously there are quite a lot of really unusual and strange stars and exoplanets we've discovered in the last few decades. But we seem to be discovering more and more unusual stars and with every single discovery we're learning so much more about our own solar system and of course about our own galaxy as well. This for example is a very recent discovery of two stars, a binary system, with two stars essentially forcing each other to throw off their own um, envelopes, creating this beautiful image you see on the screen. This was only discovered a few weeks ago. But today we're going to be talking about another unusual discovery, a star that pulsates but only on a single side of the actual surface, basically only here. But first, briefly about star pulsations. So first of all, almost every, and I would even say every star out there pulsates to some extent. For example, this right here is a typical Cepheid variable, specifically this is known as a delta Cepheid, and this is sort of what the star would look like if you were to come really close to it. Essentially, it's a star that, I guess in some sense, looks like it's breathing. It shrinks and then it grows, it shrinks and it grows. It does so extremely predictably, and this pulsation even depends on its total mass and involves the top brightness, which in a nutshell means that we can use these stars as a kind of a distance candle to measure distances across the galaxy and the universe, which is exactly what we use Cepheid variables for. The most famous Cepheid variable is uh, the star known as Polaris, also sometimes referred to as the Northern Star, and this is essentially what allowed us to learn so much about them. This star also pulsates, and because of its very regular pulsations and its total brightness, we can use this star and other stars to predict distances across the galaxy. Some stars, however, and actually most stars, are not as predictable. This is from Betelgeuse. The actual pulsating here is very unpredictable, and as we've been learning over the past few months, Betelgeuse can even dim to the point where it's only about 35% of its original brightness. So these unusual pulsation events can be extremely hard to predict. Now, our sun also has a little bit of variability, but it's not as dramatic as some of these other stars. The solar cycle lasts for about 11 years, and it's a lot less dramatic than some of these other star systems, which is actually lucky for us, because for us to have actual stable conditions for life on the planet, we do need to have a stable star. So many scientists believe that this is, might be actually one of the reasons why life was able to form in the solar system and might not really exist in other star systems. Although this is just one of many many reasons why we think solar system is just one of those lucky systems. But when it comes to binary stars, the scientists have always speculated that there could be a system where the pulsating is actually um, sort of driven and controlled by the partner star. In other words, because these two stars would orbit relatively close to one another, and because of various tidal effects, the pulsations could be completely driven by the star orbiting the larger star. So essentially, several decades ago, scientists predicted that there could be a system where the pulsations only happen on a single side of the star, while the other side, the opposite side, stays completely undisturbed. And for the first time ever, we found such a star. This is what the scientists believe is probably happening there, and this is probably why it seems to be pulsating only on a single side. If you look really closely, you'll see how the star seems to actually stretch a little bit toward the smaller partner. This is all because of the tidal effects caused by the partner that orbits around the star. It takes approximately 1.6 days per orbit, and on the side where the smaller star is located, that's exactly where these pulsations happen. And the larger star, known as HD 74423, is approximately 1.7 times the mass of our Sun, so it's a lot more massive, it's also larger in size, and this system is located approximately 1500 light years away from us. But the smaller partner here is just a typical red dwarf. And despite the system already being so strange, there are other unusual phenomena here as well. Specifically, for scientists, they can't really explain why the system is so low in metallicity. And what metallicity implies is that these stars are made of predominantly hydrogen and also helium, but possess almost nothing else. In other words, there are very, very few non-hydrogen and non-helium elements. 
which usually suggests that these stars are really old from one of the earlier generations and also that they probably don't possess any silicate uh, planets. At the same time, the scientists are not entirely sure if the pulsating actually happens on the side facing the partner or if it's on the opposite side. Because right now there's no way to actually try to find out which direction these pulsations came from. So in other words, it could technically be on the opposite side, despite this simulation showing it as the side facing the partner. At the same time, we're obviously not entirely sure how the system formed, how the pulsations uh, originated, and most importantly, what's going to become of the system later on. Basically, are these stars going to collide with one another? Is one star going to escape somewhere else? Or is this a more or less permanent system? Although at the moment, it does seem like at some point, the partner star might actually collide with the larger star. Which could, of course, trigger some sort of a large catastrophic event, like what you see right here on the screen. And what's really important about this study and a lot of other astronomical studies is that, just like with previous unusual discoveries, this too was actually discovered by citizen scientists, and only then was brought to attention to scientists working for universities. In other words, this is just another example of how amateur astronomy has advanced so much, where a lot of really cool discoveries are actually made by people like you and me. And since this discovery was made using the beautiful NASA's TESS telescope, that's essentially meant to replace Kepler's discoveries and find a lot more exoplanets near us, you too could join this community and become a citizen scientist by joining, for example, with this right here. I'm posting the link for this in the description, but essentially this is a combination of uh, very small mini-games that are used to help scientists classify various detections made by the beautiful test telescope that can then be used by actual scientists to study this in a little bit more detail. I've done this a few times myself, it's kind of fun, it's a good sort of time waster, and it obviously helps scientists and science to advance a little bit faster. But most importantly, because test data is actually completely free and available to everyone, one day we'll also talk about how you could try to find a planet yourself by using all of the data that you can download on the internet. Although it's probably going to be a slightly longer and a little bit more complicated video. But anyway, until we discover more and until we find more unusual stars and planets, that's really all I wanted to talk about. In some of the future videos, especially when James Webb Telescope becomes operational, I'm sure we'll actually talk about something even stranger. But until then, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, check out the paper I mentioned in the description below, maybe join the citizen science community, and maybe consider supporting this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.